Hey fellow lab rats, this is Rebecca from the Lab Rat YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to be discussing the staining of nerves in the histopathology laboratory. All right, let's get started. The nervous system has two structural parts, the central nervous system, which includes the brain and the spinal cord, and the peripheral nervous system, which contains all the other nervous system tissue. Now within those two anatomical parts or structural parts, there are two functional parts of the nervous system, and they are uh, the somatic sy system and the autonomic system. So the somatic system is comprised of nerves that link the brain and the spinal cord to voluntary muscles. So it's considered under conscious control. And then there is an autonomic system, which is not under control. The, the actions are just involuntary, meaning we cannot consciously control them. From a histological perspective, the nervous system can be broken down into three different categories of uh, things that we stain. Um, so those for neuronal cell bodies and their processes, uh, glial cells and their processes, and the myelin sheath. And we'll talk about each of these groups and what they include here in this lecture. So the first group of things that we stain uh, within the nervous system involve the neurons. So neurons are nerve cells that help to send messages throughout the body and allow basically everything the human body does. So there are around 14 billion neurons within the brain. And the neuron contains uh, something called a cell body or a soma, um, or it's also called a perikaryon as well. And within that cell body, um, there is a nucleus and um, can also contain the axon and the dendrite. So let's look at the neuron uh, in drawing form here on the right hand side of the screen. Uh, so we have a nucleus here, right? So this here is the nucleus, the soma or cell body or perikaryon, whichever you would like to use, dendrites, axons, <clears throat> axon terminal, and then we also have the myelin sheath, which we'll talk about in a little bit. And then also the nissel substance, which is uh, within the soma or the cell body, which again, we'll talk about these here momentarily. So nissel substance is also called a tigroid substance or a chromodial substance. Um, and this is a basophilic material that is within the cytoplasm of the neuron. So it stains very sharply with basic aniline dye. Um, an example of this would be crestle ect violet. Um, so that's a type of dye we'll be discussing later on in this lecture. Uh, chromatolysis is when um, the neuron is injured and during this injury, the nissel substance disappears. And this phenomenon is helpful for assessing the damage of neurons and tissues when we stain it. Dendrites are short uh, branched processes in the neuron that serve as the site for information input of the neuron. So dendrites do not have a myelin sheath. Um, now axons or nerve fibers are responsible for carrying nerve impulses over long distances. Each neuron has a single axon that terminates in the dendrite. Neutrofibrils are interlacing threads that are composed of aggregations of neurofilaments and neurotubules. And these go throughout the neuron cytoplasm um, and extend either from one dendrite into another or into an axon. Most of the central nervous system does not contain connective tissue proper. Actually, the, the only place that exists within the central nervous system is in the meninges that cover the brain and in the blood vessels. But because there is no connective tissue proper, um, the neuroglia serve as the supporting, uh, supporting network. Um, so these are also referred to as glial cells. So neurons are surrounded by the glial cells and um, these are responsible for producing the myelin sheath. There are four different types of glial cells, the oligodendroglia, astrocytes, microglia, and ependymal cells. Uh, the oligodendroglia are small cells that help to produce and also maintain the myelin sheath. So out of all the neuroglia or um, glial cells, these are in the highest amount. 
Um, they are in both gray matter and white matter. And when I say gray and white matter, the gray matter is composed mainly of nerve cell bodies and the white matter is composed mainly of nerve, nerve fibers, most of these being myelinated. Uh, we do not typically stain this type of glial cell. Uh, now there are two types of astrocytes, so proteoplasmic or protoplasmic astrocytes, uh, which are in the gray matter, and fibrous astrocytes, which are in the white matter. And when there is injury in the central nervous system, astrocytes help to function in the formation of scars. Um, they also help to support nerve fiber tracts and help in the exchanges of fluids, gases, and also metabolites within the nervous tissues, uh, blood, and in the cerebral spinal fluid. Stains uh, do uh, occur for the demonstration of astrocytes within tissue, um, but these stains have actually largely been replaced with immunohistochemical procedures. Microglia are phagocytic cells that are present both in the brain and within the spinal cord. Uh, these are not typically stained. And the ependymal cells are uh, epithelial cells that are present in the lining of ventricles and the spinal cord. They help to form a barrier between the nervous tissue and the cerebral spinal fluid. Myelin is a white fatty material that contains protein, cholesterol, phospholipids, and cerebrocytes. Uh, myelin is broken down uh, with paraffin processing, um, except for a proteolipid called neurokeratin. So if processed in paraffin, neurokeratin will be what is left in the embedded tissue. The myelin sheath um, is kind of like a sleeve that is wrapped around the axons in the neuron. And it's formed both by oligodendroglia in the central nervous system and Schwann cells in the peripheral nervous system. When there is an injury or some sort of disease that causes the breakdown or the destruction of myelin, um, a lipid is formed. Uh, the stains Luxolfast Blue and Iron Hematoxylin are used commonly to um, see or commonly for the visibility or demonstration of the neuron's myelin sheath. So now that we've talked about the components of the nervous system that we stain, let's talk about the stains. So there are two special staining techniques that are used just for the demonstration or uh, to make visible uh, the nissel substance within a tissue section. Um, these are the Kressel ect violet methods, both one and two. So both of these methods are used for the visualization of neurons and show the loss of nissel substance if present. Um, now we've talked about this concept before, so do you remember what the loss of nissel substance is called? If you want to pause the video, you can think about it what the loss of a nissel substance, what is that called? It's called a uh, chromatolysis. So um, these stains will show uh, if there's any chromatolysis within the tissue. So nissel substance contains RNA, and that is why it will sharply stain with a basic aniline dye, um, and Crestle Act Violet is an example of that type of dye. So tissue should be fixed in 10% neutral buffered formalin and the paraffin section should be cut from six to eight microns in thickness. Quality control for both of these methods um, is spinal cord tissue. Um, so both of these methods require the same fixatives, uh, thickness and quality control tissue. So I just made one slide for both of them. What they differ in are the reagents required and also the procedures. So the reagents required for the Cressel Act Violet Method 1 are Cressel Act Violet Solution and Balsam Xylene Mixture. To stain using the Cressel Act Violet Method 1, the tissue should first be deparaffinized and hydrated to distilled water. The tissue needs to be stained with Cressel Act Violet for 3 to 5 minutes and then rinsed in two changes of distilled water. And after that distilled water rinse, the sections need to be placed in 95% alcohol for 30 seconds and then absolute alcohol for 30 seconds. Then the sections need to be transferred into xylene for a one minute increment. After this one minute period is complete, it should be placed in a balsam xylene mixture for two minutes. Following this step, uh, differentiated and absolute alcohol. So two changes of that absolute alcohol at 10 to 30 seconds each. 
then it should be taken through uh, several changes of xylene. Um, so the sections need to be checked with a microscope at this point, and differentiation steps should be repeated until the background is colorless under the microscope. And after that colorless background is achieved, the section should be mounted with synthetic resin. When stained with the Kressel Ect Violet uh, method, uh, method number one, both nissel substance and nuclei will be blue to purple in color, and the background will be colorless. Uh, you can see several neurons here um, in the right hand side photograph. Remember, those are blue to purple in color. Now, the reagents needed for the second method of the Kressel Ect Violet method. Um, um, our Cressel Act Violet solution and working Cressel Act Violet solution at a pH of 2.5. To perform the Cressel Act Violet second method, the tissue should be deparaffinized and hydrated to distilled water. The tissue section should be stained with working Cressel Act Violet for eight minutes, and after that eight minute period, the section should be dehydrated using two changes of both 95% and absolute alcohol. After this dehydration step, the section should be cleared in two changes of xylene and then mounted in synthetic resin. The second method has the same results as the first, so nissel substance and nuclei will be blue to purple, and the background will be colorless. So with this method, if the slides are looked at macroscopically, meaning just looking at it um, just with eyes and not with the microscope, it may look like it did not stain properly. So this should be checked under a microscope to ensure that the stain did actually in fact stain. The special staining technique for nerve fibers, nerve endings, and neurofibrils, um, one of these is called the Bodian method. The Bodian method is used to stain nerve fibers within tissue sections. Protargol is a commercial silver proteinate which is used to impregnate tissue. Copper is added to the protargol to destain the connective tissue. This destaining allows differentiation between uh, neural and connective tissue elements within uh, the tissue. Hydroquinone is used to reduce silver salts that can occur as deposits on tissue structures. The tissue is toned with gold chloride um, and <clears throat> the gold is reduced with oxalic acid. Sodium thiosulfate is used with this method to help remove any unused silver. Tissue should be fixed with 10% neutral buffered formalin and the paraffin section should be cut to 6 to 8 microns in thickness. Quality control for the Bodian method should be either peripheral nerve tissue or cerebral cortex tissue. Spinal cord tissue should not be used uh, for this uh, quality control method. The reagents needed for the Bodian method of staining are uh, that 1% protargol solution, which we've already talked about, reducing solution, 1% uh, gold chloride solution, 2% oxalic acid solution, 5% sodium thiosulfate solution, aqua regia, and aniline blue solution. To perform the Bodian method, tissue should be deparaffinized first and then hydrated to distilled water. For every 100 milliliters of the protargol used, um, four to six grams of clean copper shot um, uh, must be added to it. And this clean copper shot needs to be cleaned with the aqua uh, regia and then rinsed with distilled water before use. So the tissue check section should be in the solution at 37 degrees Celsius for 48 hours. After that 48 hour period, the sections need to be rinsed in three changes of distilled water. Next, the section should be placed in reducing solution for 10 minutes, then rinsed in three changes of distilled water. They need to uh, then be toned with gold chloride for 10 minutes, followed by yet another three changes of distilled water to rinse. Uh, then the tissue should be uh, developed in oxalic acid solution until the background turns gray and the nerve fibers are stained. This is usually around three to five minutes for this uh, to happen. And then again, it needs to be followed up with three changes of distilled water to rinse it. After this rinsing uh, uh, process, the tissue section should be treated with sodium thiosulfate for five minutes and then rinse with distilled water once again. Uh, it's optional to counterstain the tissue sections at this point, but if indicated, the aniline blue solution should be used for this. 
Lastly, dehydrate with 95% and absolute alcohol using two changes of each of those. Um, then clear with two changes of xylene and then mount. When stained using the Bodian method, both nerve fibers and nuclei will be black in color. The background should be light gray or blue color. The photo on the uh, on this slide, the right hand side of the slide, uh, shows staining using the Bodian technique. You can see the nuclei and nerve fibers are black. So let's use red here. So these are the nuclei and the nerve fibers are these black. Goodness, my pointer isn't working very well, but these black fibers all over are uh, the nerve fibers. And then of course, the unstained um, neural neuron cell bodies, which are here. Okay. Now this shows with the counter stain. So the photo on the left hand side of the screen shows a cerebellum tissue that has uh, been Bodian stained and then counter stained with that aniline blue. So nerve fibers and nuclei are visible here. So here's a nuclei, nucleus, right? And then of course the nerve fibers all here. Okay. All right. Um, so the photo on the right hand side shows an example of cortex tissue, uh, cortex tissue uh, section that has been overstained with that counter stain aniline blue. So the contrast between the background and the black stain axons are lost. So this is un an unacceptable stain. Uh, the one on the left is, is good and acceptable. The one on the right is not. The special staining technique for nerve fibers and neurofibrils in the, uh, is the home silver nitrate method. The home silver nitrate method is, of course, for the staining of nerve fibers and neurofibrils. So Holmes is the creator of this method, and they thought that the uh, protargol solution uh, would, is unable to reach enough alkalinity to optimally uh, impregnate tissue. So this technique was modified by creating a buffered impregnating solution, and that's what this is. So it uses uh, pyridine to make it alkaline in pH. Tissue should be fixed at 10% neutral buffered formalin, and the paraffin section should be cut uh, from 10 to 15 microns in thickness. Quality control for this staining method should be cerebral cortex tissue. Uh, spinal cord tissue cannot be used for this as um, all axons appear in the cross section. There are two slides of reagents that are needed for the home silver nitrate method. So these are 20% uh, aqueous silver nitrate, 1% aqueous silver nitrate, boric acid solution, borax solution, 10% pyridine solution, um, an impregnating solution as well as a reducing solution, 0.2% gold chloride. Let's go to the next slide here. 2% oxalic acid solution is also needed for the home sulfur nitrate method, as well as 5% sodium thiosulfate. To perform the home sulfur nitrate staining method, the tissue should be deparaffinized and hydrated in distilled water. The tissue slides then need to be placed in 20% uh, silver nitrate. This step needs to be at room temperature in the dark and let it sit for one hour. The impregnating solution needs to be prepared, uh, leaving 20 milliliters of solution per tissue slide that's being stained. From the 20% silver nitrate solution, the slide should then be removed and washed in three changes of distilled water for 10 minutes. The slide should then be placed in the impregnating solution, covered, and then incubated at 37 degrees Celsius and left overnight. After the overnight uh, incubation, uh, the slide should be removed and fluid shaken off and then placed in the reducer for no less than two minutes. After this step, the section should be washed in running water for three minutes, then rinsed in distilled water. After the distilled water rinse, the section should be toned with 0.2% aqueous gold chloride for three minutes and then rinsed again with distilled water. Next, the section should be placed in 2% aqueous oxalic acid for 3 to 10 minutes. Um, the section should be removed when the axons are blue, black in color. Once this color is achieved, the section should be rinsed again with distilled water. Then they should be placed in 5% aqueous sodium thiosulfate. Our procedure continues here on the next slide. So following this step, the, uh, the tissue section should be washed in tap water for 10 minutes. Just like with the Bodian stain, if counter staining is indicated, that step can be performed after that 10 minute uh, tap water step. 
The sections must be dehydrated with 95% and absolute alcohol with two changes each of those. Then cleared with xylene and then mounted with synthetic resin. After staining with the home silver nitrate method, axons, nerve fibers, and neurofibrils will all be black in color. This photo shows the central nervous system tissue that is stained using the home silver nitrate method. The axons are stained black and the unstained neural neuron cell bodies can be stained here, surrounded by unstained artifactual space. So let's use red for this. So these are those axons, uh, nerve fibers, and these are the cell bodies surrounded by that unstained space. Neurofibrillary tangles and senile plaques are present in patients with Alzheimer's disease. There are three different stains we're gonna discuss in this lecture that help demonstrate both the neurofibrillary tangles and the senile plaques. These are the uh, Bolshowski uh, PAS stain, um, the microwave modification of the Bolshowski method and the severe Munger modification of the Bolshowski method. The Bolshowski PAS stain is for the demonstration of the visualization of neurofibrillary tangles and senile plaques, which are, as I stated before, present in patients with Alzheimer's disease. So with this stain, um, ammoniacal silver solution impregnates the tissue and the silver in that solution is deposited on neurofibrils and axons. And the silver is reduced by formaldehyde that is present in a developing solution that is used for this staining technique. Gold chloride is added to tone the tissue. Um, sodium thiosulfate removes um, uh, any unreduced silver, and then the Schiff reagent stain the basement membranes and amyloid that is uh, present within the plaques. Tissues for this stain need to be fixed in 10% neutral buffered formalin, and the paraffin section should be cut um, at 8 to 10 microns in thickness. Central nervous system tissue with neurofibrillary tangles and senile plaques present should be used for quality control for the staining method. Reagents needed for the Bolchowski uh, PAS stain are ammoniacal silver solution, 20% aqueous silver nitrate, uh, developing solution or developer, 0.5% gold chloride, 5% sodium thiosulfate, 1% periodic acid, and Schiff reagent. To perform the Bolchowski PAS stain, first the ammoniacal silver solution should be prepared. So this is done by placing 50 milliliters of 20% aqueous silver nitrate in an Erlenmeyer flask. Um, concentrated ammonium hydroxide should be added um, one drop by one drop, so drop by drop, while swirling that Erlenmeyer flask until a precipitate forms um, and then it clears. So the precipitate forms and then it goes away. So once it clears and once that precipitate goes away, two milliliters of ammonium hydroxide should be added to the flask and then filtered. Next, the tissue should be deparaffinized to distilled water. The tissue section should be placed in 20% silver nitrate solution, and this should be in a dark area at room temperature for a 20-minute period. Following that 20 minutes, the tissue should be washed in distilled water. Then the tissue slide should be placed in the ammoniacal silver solution uh, at room temperature for 20 minutes. After this 20-minute period, they should be washed in ammonia water, four drops to 100 milliliters of distilled water. While still in that ammonia water, um, two drops should be added of developer um, to, the, to that solution, and then that solution should be mixed. The slide should then be placed in the mixed developer ammoniacal silver solution. The tissue should turn a brown color in this. Usually it takes around three minutes for this color change to occur. So after that tissue turns brown, it needs to be washed in ammonia water, then distilled water for a one minute period. And let's continue the procedure on the next slide here. So after the one minute distilled water wash, the tissue should be toned with gold chloride until first gray appears. And this takes usually around um, approximately 30 seconds. Then the tissue section should be washed in ammonia water and then distilled water for one minute. Next, the slide should be placed in 5% sodium thiosulfate for 30 seconds, followed by a five minute wash in running tap water, then rinsed with distilled water. 
Afterwards, they should be placed in 1% periodic acid solution for five minutes. Um, and uh, then um, they should be uh, rinsed in two changes of distilled water. Following the rinse in distilled water, um, they should be placed in uh, shift reagent uh, for five minutes and then washed with tap water for five minutes. Lastly, the tissue should be dehydrated with two changes of 95% alcohol and two to three changes of absolute alcohol, uh, cleared with two to three changes of xylene and then mounted with a synthetic resin. When stained with the Bolchowski uh, PAS stain, neurofibrillary tangles and peripheral neurites of neuritic plaque should be dark black, axons will be black as well, and then amyloid and lipofusion will be magenta in color. So let's look at some examples here. The photo on the left-hand side um, is a cortex tissue that's taken from a patient with Alzheimer's disease. So this tissue has been stained using the Bolchowski uh, PAS staining method. Senile plaques and neurofibrillary tangles are visible here. So senile plaques are spherical structures that have amyloid inside of them, which are seen with the PAS. And these senile plaques are surrounded by neurites, which are highlighted with the silver in the stain. The neurofibrillary tangles are seen as accumulations of fibrillary material that fill the cytoplasm around the nucleus. Now, the, uh, the photo on the right-hand side shows the same tissue that shows a higher magnification on this, of this senile plaque. So this is what we're talking about here. Oh, goodness, I really screwed that up. Let me erase that. <laughs> yeah, let's try that again. I can draw circles. <laughs> That's what we're talking about. So that there is this here at a higher magnification. All right, so that's what a senile plaque looks, using, uh, looks like using this method. The microwave modification of the Wolchowski method is used for the demonstration of nerve fibers, also neurofibrillary tangles, and senile plaques and tissues. In this stain, ammoniacal silver solution impregnates um, or infiltrates the tissue, and the silver in that solution deposits on neurofibrils and axons. The silver is reduced by formaldehyde that's present in the developer solution. Thodium thiosulfate then removes the, any unreduced silver. So tissues that are stained using this me method should be fixed in 10% neutral buffered formalin, and the paraffin section should be cut at 8 microns in thickness. Quality control tissue for this stain should be central nervous system tissue, preferably with um, tissue that is, contains those neurofibrillary tangles and senile plaques. The reagents needed for the microwave modification of the Bolchowski method are 1% silver nitrate solution, 5% silver nitrate solution, 10% nitric acid solution, a developer solution, 1% ammonium hydroxide solution, and 2% sodium sol uh, thiosulfate. To stain with the microwave modification of the Bolchowski method, tissue should be deparaffinized and hydrated to distilled water. The tissue slide should be placed in 40 milliliters of 1% silver nitrate in a plastic uh, Copeland jar. The Copeland jar should then be microwaved on a um, power level 3 for one minute. After this microwaving step, the slide should be dipped up and down and should remain in that warm solution for 15 minutes and then placed in distilled water. The warmed 1% silver nitrate should be poured into a 125 milliliter flask. Um, then add 28% 28 ammonium hydroxide dropwise, so drop by drop, until the precipitate in the solution clears. The flask should be shaken constantly throughout this process. So once that precipitate clears, the 5% silver nitrate should be added dropwise as well until slightly cloudy. The ammoniacal um, silver solution should be poured in a plastic Copeland jar. The tissue slide should then be put in this jar and then microwaved on uh, power level three for one minute. And again, the slide should be dipped up and down and should remain in the solution for 15 minutes. After this 15 minute period, the slide should be placed in 1% ammonium hydroxide for less than 20 seconds. Next, three drops of developer should be added to the ammoniacal silver solution. This solution should be mixed with a glass rod and the tissue slide should be immediately placed in it for three minutes. In this three minute period, the tissue will turn brown and the solution will turn gray in color. 
Uh, there will be a mirror of silver that forms on the sides of the Copeland jar, and it, that also can form on the sides of the tissue slides. Not always, but it can. So the slide should then be placed in 1% ammonium hydroxide for less than 15 seconds. And let's go to the next slide to continue this procedure. So the tissue slide should then be rinsed in three changes of distilled water. At this point, if there's any of that mirrored silver on the sides of the slides, they can be wiped off, but careful not to wipe you know, the tissue off of the slide, just the, the silver on the side of it. The slide should then be placed in 2% sodium thiosulfate for 30 seconds. Following this 30 second step, they should be rinsed in four changes of distilled water, then dehydrated with graded alcohols, cleared in three to four changes of xylene, and then mounted with synthetic resin. When stained with the, uh, the modification of the Wolchowski method, axons and cytoplasmic neurofibrils will be brown to black in color. Um, neurofibrillary tangles and plaques will be dark brown to black um, or black. Uh, neuromelanin will be black, so neuromelanin is a pigment that's found in the brain tissue. And then lipofusion will be brown or black in color. So this photo shows uh, on the right hand side of this screen shows a cortex tissue from a patient that has Alzheimer's disease that's stained using um, this microwave procedure. So you can see the senile plaques here in this section. So remember these are kind of like circular all right, so there's a senile plaque there. The severe Munger modification of the Bolchowski method is used for the visualization of nerve fibers, as well as neurofibrillary tangles and senile plaques and tissue. In this stain, ammoniacal uh, silver solution impregnates, silver deposit is deposited on the neurofibrils and the axons, and then the silver is reduced by formaldehyde. Sodium thiosulfate removes any unreduced uh, silver. Tissue should be fixed in 10% neutral buffered formalin and the paraffin section should be cut to 6 to 8 microns in thickness. Quality control tissue for this staining method should be uh, tissue from the central nervous system. The reagents needed for the severe Munger modification of the Bolshowski method are 10 and 20% silver nitrate solutions, formalin solution, sodium carbonate solution, 5% sodium thiosulfate solution, and an ammoniacal silver solution. To stain tissue with the severe Munger modification of the Bolshowski method, deparaffinize the tissue and hydrate to distilled water. Preheat the 20% silver nitrate to 60 degrees Celsius uh, for 15 minutes. After heating this, place the slides um, in there and then let them remain um, in, in that uh, silver nitrate um, in the oven for 15 minutes. Following this 15 minute period, rinse them with distilled water. This needs to be done uh, one tissue slide at a time. Then put the slide in a clean, dry staining jar. Add 10 drops of formalin solution to the working ammoniacal silver solution while shaking it. And pour this solution over the slides and let develop for 5 to 30 minutes or until uh, it turns golden brown. And you need to check this under a microscope. It's important to keep it all in motion during the developing process. If this do isn't done, precipitation will occur. Next, the tissue section should be rinsed with three changes of tap water. They should be placed in sodium thiosulfate for two minutes and then wash in fresh tap water. Finally, dehydrate, clear, and mount with synthetic resin. When tissue is stained with the severe Munger modification of the Bolchowski method, nerve endings, neurofibrils, and neurofibrillary tangles will be black in color. The photo on this slide shows a cerebellum tissue that is stained using this method. The black here are the dendritic processes of the basket cells within the tissue. There is one special stain for neurofibrillary tangles and senile plaques that we're going to be discussing. Um, so this is the uh, thioflavin S modified method. I discussed thioflavin uh, when I discussed amyloid staining. Um, so it's in, uh, it's I think it's actually called the amyloid staining lecture in this histopathology lecture series. So thioflavin um, dyes are fluorescent dyes that are used to see amyloid deposits in tissues. 
The thiophobin S modified method is used for the visualization of uh, neurofibrillary tangles, senile plaques, which indicate uh, neurofibrillary degeneration, and the deposition of amyloid in tissues, which happens in patients with Alzheimer's disease. Tissue should be fixed in 10 to 20% neutral buffered formalin for this. Paraffin sections should be cut at six microns in thickness. They should be left to air dry overnight. And after the overnight air dry, they should be dried in an oven at 58 to 60 degrees Celsius for 10 minutes, then allowed to cool. The quality control tissue for this method of staining should be central nervous system tissue that does contain those senile plaques and neurofibrillary tangles. The reagents needed for the thioflavin S method are 0.25% potassium permanganate solution, 1% potassium metabisulfate oxalic acid solution, sodium hydroxide hydrogen peroxide solution, 0.25% acetic acid solution, and the thioflavin S solution in 50% alcohol. To stain tissue using the thioflavin S method, the tissue should be deparaffinized and hydrated to distilled water. It should then be rinsed for five minutes in distilled water. The slides should be covered with 0.25% potassium permanganate for 20 minutes and then wash in running tap water for five minutes. The slide should then be treated with 1% potassium metabisulfate oxalic acid for two minutes. It's important to agitate the slides during this step. After this treatment, the tissue should be washed in running tap water for five minutes and then placed in sodium hydroxide peroxide for 20 minutes. Following this 20 minute uh, step, the tissue slide should be washed with three changes of running tap water and then given a final rinse in millipore filtered water. Afterwards, the slide should be placed in 0.25% acetic acid for one minute and then washed in running tap water for five minutes. And the procedure is going to continue on the next slide here. After that five minute wash and running tap water, the tissue slide should be placed in two changes of 50% alcohol for two minutes, then placed in 0.0125% thioflavin S for seven minutes. After that seven minute period, uh, it should be placed in two changes of 50% alcohol at two minutes with agitation, and then two changes of 95% alcohol at two minutes each. After these steps, the tissue should be fully dehydrated in two changes of absolute alcohol, three changes of xylene, and mounted with a non-fluorescent mounting medium. The slide should be viewed using a fluorescent microscope with a fluorescence filter. When properly stained using the thioflavin S method, neurofibrillary tangles, senile plaques, neuropil threads, and amyloid will be bright green in color. Diffuse plaques and extracellular tangles will be visible as a paler uh, yellow-green color. Let's look at an example here on the next slide. The photo on the left-hand side of the slide here shows brain tissue stained with the thioflavin S method. This is brain tissue from a patient that had Alzheimer's disease. So this shows the senile plaques, neurofibrillary tangles, and amyloid. The photo on the right shows the same tissue just at the higher magnification. There are two special staining techniques for glial fibers, the Mallory PTAH stain and the Holzer method. We'll talk about both of these. The Mallory PTAH stain is for glial fibers. Uh, tissues must be fixed in 10% neutral buffered formalin and the paraffin sections need to be cut uh, from six to eight microns in thickness. Quality control for this stain is cerebral cortex tissues. Uh, spinal cord tissue cannot be used for QC for this stain. The reagents needed for the Mallory PTAH stain are, of course, PTAH solution, Lugol iodine, 5% sodium thiosulfate, 1% potassium permanganate, and 5% oxalic acid solution. To perform the Mallory PTAH stain, tissue should be deparaffinized and hydrated to distilled water. The section should be mordanted with Zanker solution with acetic acid. Then uh, the section should be left in this solution overnight at room temperature. After this overnight period, the tissue should be washed with running water for 15 minutes, then place in Lugol iodine for 15 minutes. After the Lugol iodine step, the tissue section should be decolorized in 95% alcohol for a one hour period. Next, they should be rinsed rapidly in three changes of distilled water. 
And after this wash, they should be placed in 1% potassium permanganate for 5 minutes, then washed in running tap water for 10 minutes. Following this 10 minute wash, the section should be decolorized in 5% oxalic acid for 5 minutes, then washed with running tap water for 10 minutes. Next, the tissue section should be put in a PTAH solution overnight at room temperature. After this overnight stain, it should be dehydrated in two changes, each of 95% in absolute alcohol, cleared with xylene, and then mounted with synthetic resin. When stained using the Mallory PTAH stain, glial fibers, nuclei, and myelin will be blue. Neurons will be salmon, which is like kind of a, a pink color. Uh, the photo shows the glial fibers and myelin blue, um, and the neuron cell bodies are the salmon pink color. You can see that there's kind of a lack of intensity with this stain, and um, of course, because both glial fibers and myelin stain blue with this stain, it's difficult to interpret. The hoser method is another stain for glial fibers. It's actually the preferred technique for glial fibers. So in this stain, the glial fibers are stained with crystal violet and are resistant to decolorization with the alkaline, aniline, and the chloroform mixture. Tissue should be fixed in 10% neutral buffered formalin, and the paraffin sections need to be cut from 6 to 8 microns in thickness. Quality control for the hoser method should be cerebral cortex tissue. Spinal cord tissue should not be used for quality control. The reagents necessary for the hoser staining method are 0.5% aqueous phosphomolybdic acid solution, phosphomolybdic alcohol solution, I hate that word, <laughs> absolute alcohol chloroform mixture, crystal violet stain, potassium bromide solution, and a differentiating solution. To stain using the hoser method, tissue must be deparaffinized first and then hydrated in distilled water. The section should be first placed in that fresh phosphomildic uh, acid alcohol uh, for three minutes. After this step, the excess fluid should be drained and the slide should be put in a staining rack and covered with the absolute alcohol chloroform mixture. At this point, the tissue should become translucent. After this, the slide should be covered with crystal violet for 30, for 30 seconds. It's important to do this step uh, when the sections are still wet. Next, uh, it should be washed in 10% potassium bromide for one minute. The slides should then be blotted and allowed to air dry completely. Um, they should be differentiated individually for 30 seconds with differentiating solutions. So that means one slide at a time. Um, then it should be washed with several changes of xylene. This may need to be repeated until the background is a very pale, pale blue in color or colorless. And once that happens, it should be mounted in synthetic resin. When stained using the hoser method, glial fibers will be blue. The background will be very pale blue to colorless. The photo here shows glial fibers that are very visible with the hoser method. Uh, so the blue lines here are the glial fibers within the tissue. There is one special um, staining method just for astrocytes, and this is called the Cajol method. So again, this stain is for astrocytes, although this method has been largely replaced by immunohistochemical methods. Tissue should be fixed in formalin ammonium bromide. It's important that the tissue must be in this fixative at the minimum 48 hours, but no more than 25 days. If it has been fixed already in 10% neutral buffered formalin, the tissue should be washed and then placed in the formalin ammonium bromide for 48 hours. So this is a stain for frozen sections. They should be cut from 20 to 30 microns in thickness. Um, and it does tend to section better if the tissue is washed in tap water 30 minutes before freezing. So this is a free floating technique, so do not pick up on the slides. Uh, quality control for this stain should be cerebral cortex tissue. Uh, spinal cord tissue cannot be used for this. Reagents needed for the Cajal stain are formalin ammonium bromide, gold sublimate, and 5% sodium thiosulfate. To perform the Cajal stain, the free-floating frozen tissue section should be washed with several changes of distilled water. The section should be placed laid, uh, lying flat in gold sublimate in the dark for several uh, for uh, four hours, actually. Uh, so it's important to lay them flat and to not overlap in that solution. These sections should be purple in color at this point. 
After this four hour period, the section should be washed in distilled water, then treated with 5% sodium thiosulfate for two minutes, and then washed in several changes of distilled water. They should then be mounted on slides, blotted with bilbulous paper, and dehydrated with 95% and absolute alcohol. Then it should be cleared with xylene and mounted with synthetic resin. When stained with the cohol stain, astrocytes with paravascular feet will be stained black, and paravascular feet are expansions of the astrocyte. This photo sh here shows the black astrocytes present in the tissue uh, section. So this is the astrocyte. Oh, that's probably not the right color to use. Let's use blue. The red didn't show up very well, so that's the astrocyte, and you can see the projections here are black, right? So those are the, um, the paravascular feet. The special stains for the myelin sheath are the WOW method and the Luxol Fast Blue method. The WOW method is the first one we're going to be discussing. So this is a regressive staining method used to show myelin within a tissue sample. In this stain, the mordant hematoxylin solution binds to the phospholipid part of the myelin sheath. Two steps of differentiation occur, with the first being with ferric ammonium sulfate, uh, which is used as the excess mordant to remove excess dye. So recall in a regressive stain, the tissue is overstained and then differentiated to remove the excessive stain. So that's the regressive staining um, method. The second step of differentiation in this method is performed microscopically with borax ferrocyanide. So this solution removes any bound hematoxylin lake forming a colorless oxidized product. Tissue should be fixed in 10% neutral buffered formalin and paraffin section should be cut from 10 to 15 microns in thickness for the stain. Quality control tissue for the staining method um, is um, spinal cord tissue or medulla tissue. The reagents needed for the WOW method are 4% ferric ammonium sulfate solution, 10% alcoholic hematoxylin, a staining solution, and a differentiating solution. To reform the WOW method, the tissue should be deparaffinized and hydrated to distilled water. The tissue section should be transferred to the staining solution for 30 minutes at 54 to 56 degrees Celsius. Afterwards, the section should be washed in two changes of tap water. The tissue section should then be differentiated with 4% ferric ammonium sulfate um, until the gray matter can be distinguished from the white matter. After this step, it should be washed in three changes of tap water, then differentiated with sodium potassium ferric cyanide solution. This needs to be monitored um, with um, the uh, microscope, um, so microscopically. So the gray versus white matter should be sharply defined. After this differentiation, the tissue should be washed in two changes of tap water. Then the section should be treated with diluted ammonium water, so around six drops to 100 milliliters of that ammonia water, and then washed with distilled water. Lastly, the tissue section should be dehydrated with two changes each of 95% and absolute alcohol, cleared with xylene, and then mounted with synthetic resin. When stained with the WOW method, the myelin sheesh uh, will be blue or blue to black in color. Um, the background will be light tan in color. Gray matter and demyelinated white matter should be light brown in color here. Myelinated white matter will be blue or blue to, uh, blue to black in color. The photo on the right hand side of the slide is a cross section of spinal cord tissue that has been stained using the WOW method. You can see the distinct difference between the gray and white matter here. The photo on the left-hand side uh, shows a medulla tissue section that is stained with the uh, WOW method. The myelin sheath present in this tissue are stained like a really blue-black color, and the background gray matter is that light brown. Now the photo on the right-hand side of the slide is the same tissue section as on the left, just at a higher magnification under the microscope. Note the sharp contrast between the blue-black myelin and the light tan background. You can also see neurons that are in the lower right corner here um, as well that are decolorized. The next stain for the myelin sheath is the Luxol Fast Blue method. Luxol Fast Blue is similar to Alcyon Blue, but it is alcohol soluble, whereas the Alcyon Blue is water soluble. So this means that it is able to be dissolved in alcohol. 
The base of the lipoprotein in the myelin sheath replaces the base of the dye used. Paraffin tissue section should be cut to 10 to 15 microns in thickness and fixed in 10% neutral buffered formalin. Quality control tissue uh, for this particular stain should be spinal cord tissue um, or medulla tissue section. Reagents for uh, the Luxol Fast Blue method are 0.1% Luxol Fast Blue, 0.05% Lithium Carbonate Solution, and in a 70% alcohol solution. To perform the Luxol Fast Blue method stain, tissue must be deparaffinized and hydrated to 95% alcohol. The tissue section should be placed in Luxol Fast Blue um, from 56 to 58 degrees Celsius and leave it left overnight. Um, in, this has to be in a tightly capped container. Um, <clears throat> section should be rinsed in 95% alcohol, then rinsed with distilled water. After the distilled water rinse, the differentiation process should begin with putting tissue slides in a lithium carbonate solution for about 10 to 20 seconds, then place in 70% alcohol until gray and white matter are distinguished from each other. After this, the section should be rinsed in distilled water, then rinsed quickly with lithium carbonate, followed by several changes of 70% alcohol solution until greenish blue of, white, of the white matter contrasts with the colorless gray matter. Then it should be rinsed in distilled water, dehydrated in several changes of 95% in absolute alcohols, cleared in xylene, and then mounted with synthetic resin. When stained with the Luxol Fast Blue method, myelin will be blue in color and the background will be colorless. Myelin should con contrast sharply with the colorless gray matter and demyelinated white matter tissue. Let's look at some examples here. So the photo on the left-hand side of the slide uh, shows a medulla tissue uh, cross-section that is stained with the Luxol Fast Blue method. There's a sharp differentiation between the gray matter and white matter here. So the white color is the gray matter and the blue is the white matter. Now the photo on the right hand side shows a section showing an olivary nucleus. Olivary nuclei are found within the brain stem. The olivary nucleus is gray matter, so it's the white part here, the colorless part here, and the white matter, uh, which is the myelin, is the blue color that is seen. There is one special staining technique for both myelin sheath and missile substance combined. It is called the Luxol Fast Blue Cressel Ect Violet method. So the Luxol Fast Blue Cressel Ect Violet method is a stain for the demonstration of both myelin and missile substance in tissues. Tissues must be fixed in 10% neutral buffered formalin for this staining technique, and the paraffin sections need to be cut at 10 to 15 microns in thickness. Quality control tissues for this stain are spinal cord tissue and medulla tissue. The reagents needed for the Luxol Fast Blue Cressel Ect Violet method are 10% acetic acid solution, 0.1% Luxol Fast Blue, 0.1% Cressel Ect Violet, 0.05% lithium carbonate solution, and 70% alcohol solution. To stain a tissue using the Luxol Fast Blue Cressel Ect Violet method, the tissue must be deparaffinized and hydrated to 95% alcohol. The tissue slide should then be placed in Luxol Fast Blue solution at 56 to 58 degrees Celsius overnight in a tightly capped container. After this overnight stain, the tissue then needs to undergo a 95% alcohol rinse followed by a distilled water rinse. It then needs to be differentiated with lithium carbonate for 10 to 20 seconds and then continued with 70% alcohol solution until gray and white matter are distinguished. Following this step, the tissue needs to be washed with distilled water, then quickly rinsed in lithium carbonate solution, then with several changes of 70% alcohol solution. The sections then need to be rinsed with distilled water. After this distilled water rinse, the section, the section should be stained with Cressel Ect Violet solution for six minutes. This solution needs to be filtered and preheated to 57 degrees Celsius. It also needs to be kept hot while staining. After this step, the tissue needs to be differentiated and several changes of 95% alcohol, dehydrated in absolute alcohol, cleared with xylene, and then mounted with synthetic resin. When stained with the Luxol Fast Blue Cressel Ect Violet, um, myelin in the tissue sample will be blue. Nissel substance and nuclei will be violet in color. 
And as a special note here, acetic acid must be added to the crustal violet solution. Um, if this does not happen, there will be a diffuse background staining. It also needs to be heated before the tissue slides are placed in it. And that's that crustal violet solution. Um, if it's not hot, there will be a decreased staining of any missile substance. All right, so let's look at photos of this. So the photo on the left-hand side of the slide here shows a tissue section stained with the Luxol Fast Blue Crustal Act Violet method. The nissel substance and nuclei are violet in color and the myelin is blue. If the stain has been properly differentiated, the neuron cell body will be colorless before the counter stain is applied. This will allow the nissel substance to be a rose violet color. The photo on the right hand side of this slide shows an example when the Cressel violet solution is not properly acidified with acetic acid. The background will be stained diffusely and the cell nuclei and nissel substance will not be visible. There is one stain for both myelin sheaths and nerve fibers combined. This is the Luxol Fast Blue Home Silver Nitrate method. The Luxol Fast Blue Home Silver Nitrate method is, of course, for the staining of myelin and nerve fibers combined in the tissues. So tissues must be fixed in 10% neutral buffered formalin and cut from 10 to 15 microns in thickness. Quality control tissue sections for this stain should be cerebral cortex tissue. Spinal cord tissue cannot be used for this stain because most axons are in cross section. The reagents needed for the Luxol Fast Blue Home Silver Nitrate method are 20% aqueous silver nitrate, boric acid solution, um, boric, borax solution, and impregnating solution, um, and also a reducing solution. Uh, there are more reagents listed on the next page here. 0.2% uh, gold chloride is also needed for this stain, as well as 2% oxalic acid solution, 5% thiosulfate, 1% Luxol Fast Blue solution, and 0.05% lithium carbonate. To perform the Luxol Fast Blue Home Silver Nitrate method, tissue should be deparaffinized and hydrated to distilled water. The tissue slides then need to be placed in 20% silver nitrate. This step needs to be at room temperature in the dark and um, sat for one hour. The impregnating solution needs to be prepared. Uh, you want to leave 20 milliliters of solution per tissue slide. From the 20% silver nitrate solution, the slide should then be removed and washed in three changes of distilled water uh, for 10 minutes. The slide should then be placed in the impregnating solution, covered and incubated at 37 degrees uh, Celsius overnight. After that overnight incubation, the slide should be removed and fluid shaken off, uh, then placed in the reducer for no less than two minutes. After this step, the section should be washed uh, in uh, running water for three minutes, then rinse in distilled water. After that distilled water rinse, the section should be toned with 0.2% aqueous gold chloride for three minutes, and then rinsed again with distilled water. Next, the section should be placed in 2% aqueous oxalic acid for three to 10 minutes. Um, and the section should be removed from this when those axons are blue to black in color. So once this color is achieved, the section should be rinsed again with distilled water. And our procedure continues here on the next slide. So after this distilled water rinse, the section should be placed in 5% aqueous sodium thiosulfate then wash in tap water for a 10 minute period. The section should then be briefly placed in 95% alcohol, then placed in Luxol Fast Blue solution um, at 60 degrees Celsius overnight um, in a tightly capped uh, container. You don't want the, um, um, the reagent to uh, evaporate. Following this overnight stain, the tissue section should be rinsed in 95% alcohol, then placed in distilled water. Then they should be transferred to 0.05% lithium carbonate for a 15 second period. Following this 15 seconds, the section should be differentiated with 70% alcohol for 20 to 30 seconds, then rinsed in distilled water. Then they should be dehydrated with two changes of 95% alcohol and absolute alcohol, cleared with xylene, and then mounted with synthetic resin. When stained with the Luxol Fast Blue Home Silver Nitrate method, the myelin sheath in the tissue will be blue to green in color. Axons and nerve fibers will be black. Uh, the photo shown here shows the nerve fibers in black here, and the blue color um, is the myelin. 
The photo on the left hand side shows a peripheral nerve tissue section. Uh, the black color here are the axons that are present and the blue color is the myelin sheath. The photograph on the right hand side of the slide shows a peripheral nerve tissue section that's stained using this method as well. And this shows a complete degeneration of both the axon and the myelin sheath within the tissue. There is a special staining technique that stains the myelin sheath, basement membranes, senile plaques, fungi, and corpora amylacea. So it's called the Luxol Fast Blue PAS Hematoxylin Method. And I don't think I've discussed the corpora uh, amylacea yet. So these are also called wastosomes and are granular structures that can occur in um, the brain during aging and they accumulate in specific areas of the brain and neurodegenerative conditions. So, okay, let's talk about this, this stain here. So for this stain, uh, tissues must be fixed in 10% neutral buffered formalin, and the paraffin section should be cut to 10 to 15 microns in thickness. Quality control for this stain is a section of medulla tissue or cerebral cortex tissue. The reagents required for this stain are 0.1% Luxol Fast Blue, 0.05% Lithium Carbonate Solution, Shift Solution, and 0.5% Periodic Acid Solution. To perform the Luxol Fast uh, Blue PAS hematoxylin method, the tissue should be deparaffinized and hydrated to 95% alcohol. The section should be placed in Luxol Blue uh, fast blue solution uh, at 56 to 58 degrees Celsius overnight in a tightly capped container. And of course that tightly capped containers, you don't want the reagents to evaporate. After this overnight incubation, the tissue section should be rinsed in 95% alcohol to remove any excess stain, then rinsed in distilled water. After that distilled water rinse, differentiation begins with immersing the slides in lithium carbonate solution for around 10 to 20 seconds. The differentiation process should be continued and 70% alcohol solution um, and kept there um, until the gray and white matter is distinguishable from one another. Then at that point, wash in distilled water. The differentiation process is finished by a brief rinsing and lithium carbonate solution, followed by several changes of 70% alcohol until the greenish blue color of the white matter contrasts with the colorless gray matter. And after this occurs, the tissue sections are rinsed in distilled water. Following the distilled water rinse, the tissue sections are placed in 0.5% periodic acid solution for five minutes, then rinsed in two changes of distilled water. And the procedure uh, continues on the next slide here. So after that, uh, two changes of distilled water rinse, the uh, tissue sections are then placed in the shift solution for 15 minutes. After that 15 minute period, the sections are washed in tap water for five minutes. Then they are stained with Harris hematoxylin for 30 seconds and then washed with tap water for five minutes. And after this five minute period, the back, if the background is not clear, the section can be dipped in acid alcohol and then washed. Um, if after that five minute period, the nuclei are not dark blue to purple in color, the section should be dipped briefly in diluted ammonium hydroxide and then washed. So following this step, the section should be dehydrated with 95% alcohol and two changes of absolute alcohol. Then it should be cleared in three changes of xylene and then mounted with a synthetic resin. When stained with the Luxol Fast Blue PAS hematoxylin method, capillary basement membranes, fungus, cor corpora amylacea, and senile plaques will be rose in color. The myelin sheath will be blue to blue-green in color, and the nuclei will be purple. And you can see this on the photo on the right-hand side of the slide here. Uh, this is a central nervous system tissue section uh, that is stained with that uh, Luxol Fast Blue PAS hematoxylin method. All right, that concludes this lecture on staining of nervous system tissue. If this video helped you out, please give it a like and consider su subscribing to my channel for more educational laboratory content. And as always, if you have any questions regarding this lecture material, please feel free to leave a comment below. I'll be happy to help you out. Until next time.